Hello booktube, my name is Carrie and welcome back to my channel. Um, first and foremost, I currently have my dog like attached to my hip right now. She is literally like right in my lap under the camera. Um, so if you hear weird noises or like little pitter patters around, that's just her moving around because she's quite the diva. But on to the actual topic of this video. Um, today I am going to be doing a book haul. Um, some of these are books that I have been um, just buying for myself from like November to January. Um, others are ones that I received as Christmas gifts from families and friends. So yeah, there's quite a few to get through today. Um, so I'm going to just jump right in. First, I'm going to start off with um, some of the ones that I received as gifts. So first I have Atrium by Hala Alyan. This is a poetry collection and um, this is actually Hala Alyan's first poetry collection. I actually found this poet through an Audible exclusive called you're not a girl in a movie. I really enjoyed it and I decided that I wanted to go back and kind of read her poetry um, as it like progressed over the years. So this is her first collection and I'm really excited because one of my goals for 2022 is to read more poetry and so you'll see quite a bit of poetry pop up throughout this haul. Next I have Alligator and Other Stories by Dima Alzayat. And uh, this is a collection of short stories that all center around the theme of displacement. I'm not necessarily sure that they're all interconnected, um, but they do all have this like central theme throughout them. And something I really find interesting about this is that the author like used like different formatting for different stories, which I find really interesting and experimental. And I'm someone who really enjoys short story collections, so I'm interested to see how I'll feel about like this kind of more experimental formatting. Next I have Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Tsukugawa. And can we just take a minute for this cover because it's so cute. This is translated from, I believe, the Japanese, yeah, the Japanese by Allison Watts. And I'm actually currently reading this one. I have about like 20 to 30% of it left. This is the story of a ex-con who works at this um, confectionery shop in Japan. And one day this woman enters the shop and she has um, some visible signs of like a physical deformity that um, are like heavily stigmatized in Japan, but she makes this really, really delicious sweet bean paste. So the man agrees to hire her because the sweet bean paste is used in the pastries that they use in the shop. I'm not gonna like do a full review of this, but I will say that this is such a cute story and I'm so, so thankful that I got this for Christmas because I have been wanting to read this for years and it is like everything I hoped it would be. Next, I have Hanakan Carries On by Uzma Jalaluddin. This is the same author who wrote Aisha at Last, which I read last year and thoroughly loved. It was so good and I was so excited to see that this author was coming out with another book. This is a kind of spinoff of Aisha at Last because um, the main character, Hana Khan, her father appears in Aisha at Last, like his restaurant does, and he is in like a couple of scenes. So this is the story of his daughter who is helping him at the restaurant and um, at the same time, she also wants to become like this big radio host. So she has this secret podcast where there's this um, secret admirer who is like obsessed with the podcast and she forms like a friendship with them. Meanwhile, her family is really on edge because there's this new restaurant that is in direct competition with her dad's restaurant moving into the same neighborhood. And so they're really worried about like what the effects of that are going to be. And she's kind of grappling with how to kind of manage all of this stuff that's going on in her life. So very excited for this. Next I have Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. And I asked for this before I realized that this was like a part of a trilogy, like the Brown Sisters trilogy. I thought that all of Talia Hibbert's like books, like these Brown books were um, like all spinoffs of one another. I did not make the connection that they were sisters. I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna read the first in the series, like first or if I'm going to start with this one. This one is the one that sounds like the most interesting to me so far. Um, so it might just be that I'll like read this one and then go back to the first one. Um, but yeah, I guess like let me know if I like need to read them in a specific order or not. Um, because if I spoil something then I'm going to probably be a little bit irritated at myself for that one. And then the final one that I was gifted is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. Um, one of my really good friends got this because um, we're both like in our 20s and um, starting grad school, figuring out life. And um, 
she had read this earlier in 2021 said that it really helped her kind of like contextualize her experience and be like oh yeah everyone like in this age group is kind of going through all these things and it's like stressful and crazy but also like this is kind of like the experience and I didn't actually know that um Dolly Alderton was like a journalist I thought that this was just like a random memoir about your 20s so I kind of have like a little bit more faith in it because she's a journalist that like it's not just gonna be like a I found spiritual enlightenment and all my problems were randomly solved like I feel like it's gonna be more like genuine like her reflecting on things and those are the kind of like non-fiction memoirs that I enjoy I am a little bit confused about if this is like short stories or if they're like um like chronological moments or like how like the formatting is going to be for this um but I guess I'll just have to read it and see now on to the books that I have accumulated myself over the past few months first I have Nothing More to Lose by Najwan Darwish um and this is translated from the Arabic by Kareem James Abu Zayed um I actually picked this poetry collection up because I saw a couple of poems circulating on like social media and I really enjoyed like the writing style so I figured I would give it a chance. Next I have In the Company of Men by Veronique Tadjo. Um, this is translated from the French actually partially by the author and by another translator named John Cullen. I find it really interesting that the author like worked on this translation because I think that like that's something I always wonder about for like some authors who are bilingual like do they kind of review the translation so I think it's really awesome that this author did. Um, This is a work of fiction that is inspired by real events that took place during the Ebola outbreak in the Ivory Coast. Um, This might be one that I still kind of put off for like a little bit in reading but I think it's still gonna be so informative and like help process a few things from like this whole COVID age. Next I have Regarding the Pain of Others by Susan Sontag and this is a work of nonfiction that's kind of a reflection on war photography and how like how ethical or unethical it is the kind of like morality behind like photographing these scenes some of which like photographers don't even really get consent for um, because like they're sometimes literally photographing like a dead body things like that and just like how photographing the pain and suffering of other people is a very complex thing to um, respectfully do and to like examine morally. And I was actually interested in this not out of the like interest in photography. So in undergrad for my German studies program, I did some research on this artist called George Gross, who um, he was active in the World War One, post World War One era, and a lot of his work, um, from his earliest sketches to his more elaborate paintings, revolved around like processing things from the war, depicting some certain scenes from the war. Um, so I was wondering if this would kind of maybe help me deconstruct my own like analysis. Next, I have. Are Women on the Ground, um, Essays by Arab Women Reporting from the Arab World, which is edited by Zara Hunker. This was a collection that I actually heard about a few years ago. It was kind of a pushback at this narrative in the West that um, there were no like female journalists in the Arab world. They were heavily oppressed, all of these things. And um, this collection of journalists was like, no, actually, we have our own journalists. They report on our own stories, things like that. Um, and it just sounded really interesting to... Um, read about these stories. I have been getting into more nonfiction related to journalism so that was also kind of a push for this one. The next one has such a cool cover and I'm so excited about it and it is The Feather Thief, Beauty, Obsession, and the Natural History Heist of the Century by Kirk Wallace Johnson. I don't know a ton about this except for this beautiful cover. Um, no really except for that it comes highly recommended from Olive from a book Olive. I don't know a ton about it other than that it is about this heist that happened I believe around 2009 or 2010 um, at the British Museum of Natural History where someone like came in and stole this very rare bird feather from there this whole like case developed. It sounds super intriguing so yeah very excited for that one. Next I have The Last Children of Mill Creek by Vivian Gibson and this book holds kind of a special place in this haul because I'm originally from St. Louis, this author is originally from St. Louis, and this is a book talking about her experience growing up in St. Louis at a time when it was a heavily segregated city and her family were kind of forcibly relocated out of their homes for this um, new building project 
I believe it was a new building project to build um, a new highway system that we have now. Primarily African American communities were forced from their homes. And this is her experience um, with like the African American community in St. Louis and how that kind of shaped her experiences growing up. Really, really excited for this one. I have been kind of wanting to get into more like local history and I have a few other books that I'm hoping to pick up this year along the same theme, um, but this is the first one and I'm very, very excited for it. Next I have 30 Names of Night by Zayn Jukadar. This is a book that I am a little conflicted about now having bought it. So first off, I've read a book by this author previously but I read it after I bought this one and I didn't really enjoy it. However, they're on two entirely different themes. This one does sound a little bit more interesting. Also, a lot of my issues with the other book were related to formatting, so that could be completely different in this book. So I'm still willing to give it a chance, but I'm not going to lie and say that I'm not way more hesitant now. Um, but on to what this book is actually about. This is about a young trans man who... Um, after the death of his mother, I believe that he fully transitions and, um, he was a painter, but he can't really, um, bring himself to paint except for like in the dark of the night in this neighborhood called Little Syria where he starts painting these murals. In the process, he finds this journal from another Syrian American artist and he starts to realize that this person is somehow involved in his family. And so he kind of goes on this journey of figuring out how this person is connected to his family and um, potentially connected specifically to him and his like wanting to do art. Next I have Homie by Dana Smith. I absolutely love this color combination. I don't know why but like this bright color just like makes me very happy. Um, but I previously read Danez Smith's um, Don't Call Us Dead which is another poetry collection of this author's that I read back in 2021 and I absolutely loved it. It was amazing and I really wanted to read more by this poet. And Homie is all about um, friendship and kind of the nuances of different kinds of friendship and negotiating kind of like your own individual identities within those friendships, which I just found really interesting. And I've been kind of putting this off since I got it because I don't want to read it too soon because then there's only one other of their poetry collections still like out and I need more. I need more. Oh. Next, I have The Butterfly Mosque by G. Willow Wilson. If you don't know who G. Willow Wilson is, she is the writer of the Miss Marvel comics. I really enjoyed the Miss Marvel comics and kind of wanted to know a little bit more about the author, and I saw that she had this nonfiction memoir. This is the author's reflection on her time studying Islamic studies in Egypt and then deciding to convert to Islam and then meeting her future husband in Egypt as well. And her kind of feeling like she didn't really belong to Egyptian culture, she didn't really be belong to... American culture and so her kind of attempt to create this like third culture where she could navigate all of these worlds and still be true to her like values and true to like what she wanted to do with her life and that just sounds really interesting to me and the final thing that I have to show you guys is another poetry collection and that is If They Come For Us by Fatima Ashkar and this is a poetry collection about the author's experience growing up as a Pakistani Muslim um, American woman and kind of navigating all of these worlds and um, also like coming of age and kind of like processing some generational stuff that's happened in her family and it just sounds like a really interesting reflection. Um, I'm not gonna lie also this cover is absolutely beautiful so it might have partially been a cover by as well. So those are all of the books that I have to show you guys. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading. Bye!